Hey, what's good, YouTube? I'm I. Welcome to the channel. If you're new, please think about hitting that sub button for me. Today, I got a classic album review of my man Fifth, aka Boo Boo, aka Ferrari F50's debut studio album, Get Rich or Die Trying. This album released in 2003, and it it was so big. I mean, it absolutely put 50 on the map. It was a number one album. It sold 14 million copies and is now certified six times platinum. This was at a time when the records you sold actually reflected how nice you were as an MC. The early 2000s really appreciated true artistry and it wasn't just about the stupid shit you do outside of your music. They even made a Get Rich or Die Trying movie, which I still watch and I love till this day. Every time it comes on, I gotta check it out. Sometimes I look at this album and I was like, man, it was so good that it was a bad thing almost. Like what I mean by that is it's so good that like the artist, you cannot drop a follow-up. That's just I. Right. It has to be just like the previous or better. So it's like a lot of pressure on the artist to deliver. Many rappers drop pretty good debuts and generally get better and become bigger project by project. But for this masterpiece right here, I'm looking at it and I'm like, damn, how high, how high can a go after this shit, you know what I'm saying? So three years before the release of Get Rich or Die Trying, we all know about the infamous shooting that happened the fifth. He initially had a deal with Columbia Records, but after he got clapped, they dropped him. When you look at it, I know this may sound kind of fucked up, but it was a good thing that my man got shot nine times. If Columbia never dropped him, there would be no patiently waiting, no in the club, no signing to shady records, none of that. If he didn't get clapped, his voice would have stayed the same, right? It was cool back then, if you remember how 50 used to sound, but him having that slur like that, it just gave him a more distinctive sound, you feel me? Sometimes in life, the most f***ed up moment in your life can turn out to be a blessing because that's just how God works. It never ever makes sense how God operates and it's never on our time, but we look back and we like, damn, man, that was perfect timing. This is why this happened and that happened. That's just how God works. And like my mom's always says, when God says yes, it doesn't matter who's against you, who says no, it's gonna work because it's just God's plan. The album cover to Get Rich or Die Trying tells you so much about this album. Before you listen to it, I mean, if you've never even heard the album before, you just look at the cover, you already kind of know what to expect. You get that hardcore regression, you get Fifth talking about all the work he used to put in in the streets and how he used to move as a hustler. When I look at 50, I consider him extremely lucky because even though he did a lot of prison time, he didn't do life. And even though he got nine hot bullets put in his ass, he didn't die. That's the two options you have when you're in the streets and you're really living that life. You know what I'm saying? Life in prison or dead and gone. You hear all of these stories, you know what I'm saying? I got people in my personal life that I know that they got clapped once, right? Or not even as many times as Fifth got clapped and they're dead or they're in a wheelchair, you know what I'm saying? So he dies a lot of bullets, man, literally. Paranoia is something that will follow anybody in the streets putting in work. Always looking back, not knowing who wants to take revenge on you for something that you may have done to them. We hear about that paranoia on the song Many Men. I mean, the beat and the hook to this song. I mean, it's just still to this day when I listen to it, man, I get goosebumps. Like I feel what Fifth is talking about. You feel what Fifth is talking about, like, like you yourself, you live that life, you feel me? When it comes to beef, Fifth has never been somebody that was shy about it. He welcomes it. Anybody that can make a song like How to Rob dissing basically the whole entire rap game is clearly with this <laughs> Ja Rule, AKA Fifth's best friend, was at the heart of a lot of 50's attacks on this album. He fires shots at Ja on the song Wangsta and Your Life's on the Line, but Back Down was really the song where Fifth really went at Ja. He talked about Ja's kids. Wife, mom, murder, ink, herb, everybody, man. And even at the end of Back Down, he had some gay dude at the end pretending to like have done something with Job back in the day. And it was like the funniest. Shit. As grimy and as gangster as this album was, PIMP and 21 Questions are two songs that take on a sort of a different tone, right? You can't have an album just talking about killing people. You gotta have some stuff out there for the ladies, right? PIMP is just about making these. It's my fault, making these women work for you instead of them. And on the song 21 Questions, Fifth is talking about, Fifth is questioning if he has a ride or die chick. My favorite song on this album, man, it's a tough one because like damn near every song on this album slaps. I mean, it's incredible, right? 
but the lead single in the club was probably my favorite song, and boy, did it take off. Even Irv Gotti from Murder Inc. had to step back and say that when he heard in the club for the first time, he said that, yo, we gotta strap our seat belts because, you know what I'm saying, this is gonna, this 50 Cent guy is gonna be a big problem, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Irv for admitting that, you know what I'm saying? When In The Club came out, I remember hearing this everywhere, you know what I'm saying? At birthdays, like everywhere. And it was just such a unique sound that at the time wasn't really that prevalent, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Dr. Dre because, in my humble opinion, he's the greatest producer for a reason, you know what I mean? He just puts, he just puts magic together. A fun fact about In The Club that I never knew was the fact that the beat was initially supposed to be D12s but they didn't know how to approach it. I mean, if I'm D12, even though, you know, 50 Cent, we're all in the same family, it has to hurt every time you hear that song because it's like, that song was yours. It was in your hands, but you didn't want it. And look at what he did with that song. It would have been weird hearing D12 on in the club in a way, but it's, it's still, it has to hurt. When it comes to the production on this album, anything that includes Dr. Dre, you already know, before even listening, that it's gonna be stupid nice. That's just what Dre does. But Eminem is somebody that when you think about producing music, he doesn't really come to mind. He had a part to play in songs like Patiently Waiting, Many Men, Don't Push Me, High All The Time, all songs that I rock with, tough. I've listened to this album over a million times because it's a classic and classics never die. And I never actually realized that M made beats like that. You know what I'm saying? He even produced Nas's The Cross on the Godson album. Even though I love this album and it's universally recognized as Fifth's best album, me personally, I think that his second studio album, The Massacre, is better. I know that some of you cats are looking at me like, like, what the f is wrong with you for saying that? Are you dumb? But I don't know, man. Like, I think that it's just the fact that when I first listened to The Massacre, that was my first introduction to 50 Cent. And it drove a crazy, man. When I get to that album review, you're gonna be like, wow, like it, it drove a crazy when I was young. I know I'm one out of a hundred people in the entire world that thinks that The Massacre is better than Gary Should I Trying, but man, it's just how it is. Classics to me will never die. That's why I revisit them. And every time I listen to Get Rich or Die Trying, still to this day, I just get that feeling that I had back in the day. Same thing with The Massacre, when I get to that album review. It just takes me back to a time. Obviously, I can't put it on and listen to it for like a month straight, but when I do put it on and listen from time to time, it just takes me back. It was just an incredible album. If for some weird ass reason, there's somebody out there watching this video who has never heard Gay Rich or Die Trying, we gotta scrap. We, as soon as you see me put them down, I'm just joking, man. Slap this up a couple of times though and go listen to it because it's, it's, one of, it's one of the greatest albums of all time. I think in 2003, Jay-Z's The Black Album came out as well, so that's, all of those things were out at the time, you know what I'm saying? I'm not just saying that because I love 50 so much, but you know what I'm saying? Garrett to Die Trying, The Black Album, get in the comment box and let me know how you feel, but uh, that's it for the video, guys. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Make sure you follow me on Instagram at I'm Hurricane Isaac 95 and I'm out, peace.